Hello and welcome to the Craft Stash Christmas Blog Hop. Thrilled to have you here. We are talking about Christmas in July because to be honest, you card makers all need a little bit of extra time to be able to get your cards together before you send them out later in the year. So this is the perfect time for us to give you some Christmas inspiration. I'm going to be working with the Textures Jack Frost collection, which is still available on Craft Stash. I'm going to put all the details of not only the products that I'm using, but also where you can follow on the rest of the blog hop in the description below. I'd love it if you'd subscribe to me as well for more tips and tutorials but for now let's get on with this Christmas inspirational card. So as I said I'm going to be using my Jack Frost collection, uh, not everything in the collection, I'm actually concentrating on the stamps. So I've got the layering stamp set, so this is a negative backgrounds and stamps and text stamp set and then I've also got the sentiments too. I'll come to the sentiments a little bit later because I'm going to be focusing on this and creating your backgrounds. Now you can use either one of these two stamp sets on their own or together, they layer together beautifully which is what I'm going to be doing. Now I'm going to take the more solid piece first of all and I'm going to be creating a gorgeous kind of watercolour effect background. So let's pop that just to the side there. So you're going to need a piece of cardstock that is a heavy weight enough for you to hold your watercolour inks and your water and such. Um, you're also going to need later on a piece of vellum and you're going to of course need yourself a card base. Now this is a really simple card. I'm actually going to trim my card down. It's going to be a bit smaller than that. Um, but it's a really simple card. It's only uh, one layer, well, one layer, two layers, but you don't have to put foam tape or anything between them. You can have it completely flat. So for postage, it's going to be perfect. Um, if you're over in the US, this is quite a small card. So I know your postage rules are a little different to ours here in the UK. So you are going to be able to post these out uh, nice and inexpensively. So take your stamp first of all, pop it into your stamping platform. Now I've cut a piece of cardstock here that's slightly longer than I need, just so that I can fit my magnetic pieces on there at the top and at the bottom. So placing my stamp over the cardstock there, I'm just going to fold the platform over and lift that up. And there we go. Okay, so let's start creating this kind of watercolour background. I've chosen to use Distress Oxides. I'm going to use Evergreen Bow and Uncharted Mariner. Uncharted Mariner's got a hint of green in it and Evergreen Bow, a hint of blue. So they work together absolutely beautifully. Now, the trick when you are going to be uh, mixing two different colours on a background stamp like this or a more solid stamp like this is to do more than one impression. Don't try to get a wonderful blend in your first impression. So the more you layer and do this, the more you're going to have that perfect mix in the center. So the first thing I'm going to do is add my ink to the stamp, just like so, just pressing directly on there. And I'm just going to dab at the edges, okay? Just at the edge where the ink is. Shouldn't contaminate your ink pad at all this way. So I'm going to then just press that over for the first time. Okay, so you can see we've got some patchy pieces where I didn't quite press that, but that's fine because we're going to keep going over this. So this time I'm going to come back over that center line again. We're just going to do this two, three, four times, however many you need to get a really lovely blend between the two. Now on this one, I'm going to do a very light spritz of water. I mean, literally one or two, that's it. That's just going to help blend it with the ink that's below and just hold that for a second. Okay, what you'll see now when we lift this up, just making sure that all those missed patches where I didn't press down properly before are caught. There we go, let's just do this edge as well. There, so we're starting to get a nice blend. Now, usually I would do that two or three more times to get this line so it looks even more blended but I'm actually going to be applying some water to this anyway, lifting some areas up, so I'm not too worried this time. So let's take our background. Now you'll notice in this background, particularly in the darker color, you can see that really clearly. Uh, we've got some beautiful words and they're winter themed words running through. We've got the snowflakes, detailed snowflakes that are all negatives, so they've not come out. We've also got this distressed edge on the stamp as well. This is one of my favorite texture stamps. I absolutely adore it. So taking that off, pop that to the side. I will give that a wipe over or wash with, just with some plain water in a little while. But for now, we need to do some more distressing on this. We want to give it more of a watercolour look. So I'm going to take my the lid off of my water and I'm just going to flick 
on here some of the water droplets. Okay, you won't see them straight away, but the longer you leave that, the more you'll start to see that's going to start be, to be affected by the water. So hopefully you can see that's kind of starting to almost uh, bleach the colour a little bit. I would say just let that sit for a short while. Now, if you want even more of a distressed look to the background, you can spritz over the whole thing. This will do a fine mist and this will help to also dilute and bleach areas. You can do this closer up if you want big splashes of the bleaching. I'm calling it bleaching, but it's just lifting up the colour off the cardstock. So hopefully there you can start to see that distortion of the colour, which is absolutely beautiful. Now you can take a piece of kitchen towel and lift off your excess water, but you can also heat set this, dry this. You do need to dry it before the next stage as well. So I'm going to add my heat gun here and just dry this off and you'll find that those water splodges will get even lighter the more the cardstock dries through. Just a tip if your cardstock is starting to warp a little, because you've added water to the front of the card, you just need to add some liquid to the back as well. Just spray your water, a few, few mists of spray there. Just let that soak in for 10, 20 seconds and then heat set it as you are the front. Because the front and the back has then had the same treatment as each other, you should get the nice, even, flat kind of, no warping at all, it should be nice and straight. So the next stage is the second layer of your stamp and this is going to be in black going over the top. Now, hopefully what you'll notice when you start to use this is that you've actually got areas that are not stamping. So you're stamping over many of the white areas and I do just need to bring my head over here just to have a really close look at whereabouts my stamp's going. It needs to be in exactly the correct place there's one so just line up different areas of the stamp and you'll find that as you stamp you'll have most of the white areas filled in with the black ink but some are left so effectively what we're then going to have is four different colors because you'll have the blue the green the white of the background and the black of the foreground all showing through so this time i'm taking more of a detail ink this is tuxedo black memento and I'm going to ink everywhere over here. So you can see now as I start inking this stamp how much black is going to be there. And let's press this over. Here we go. So making sure that all areas of the stamp are being impressed. Lift that up. Gorgeous. Okay, so what we've got, let me just do this side once more, a little bit more. Make sure all those edges are done, in fact. It's a bit close to the stamping platform there. So what we've now got are black areas, white areas, and blue areas. I just love these layering stamps. I love how they mix together like so. So now I'm going to trim this down. It is eventually going to be mounted onto a card base, uh, but now I want to do the center panel before I put everything together. So stamping onto vellum or acetate or anything that's not quite a porous surface, that's a shiny surface and the ink takes forever to dry, uh, the best thing to do, if you can, is heat emboss because that will instantly seal that ink. Um, this is harder on acetate. You do need heat resistant acetate for that. But vellum and parchment work beautifully and usually there's not too much in the way of warping as long as you're not holding your heat gun in any one place at any one time for too long. So I'm going to be going to take this gorgeous sentiment. It's a long verse, verse. It says, to be able to appreciate how beautiful a snowflake is or the sparkle of Jack Frost's magic, you must first be prepared to endure stepping out into the cold. So I'm going to pop that one, so a nice long one. Let's place it on the edge of the parchment there. Actually, let's come to this edge. I always try to keep away from this if I can, this edge. I just find with any stamping platform, it's easier if you've got more of a swing onto your paper or your vellum in this case. And I'm just going to stamp that in the usual memento. But before I do that, I'm, because I'm going to be embossing, I'm going to just dab over my vellum there with a, um, an anti-static bag. So it's just going to take away any static plus any grease and pieces from the vellum before we stamp. So then inking up my stamp with the memento. Any black ink or any ink will work. Um, if you, as long as you can emboss it, it doesn't dry super quick, but on parchment it's very unlikely that it's going to dry very, very quickly. 
shapes and I like with uh, this stamping platform because you've got like the springs on the corners you can just press and release press and release across the entire image and then you can just have a look and see I just need to add a couple more a bit more um, pressure in one or two areas there we go beautiful now I'm going to add my black embossing powder so it's handy if you've got a piece of paper or something that you can catch the uh, embossing powder on so let's put that to the side I'll just bring in I've got another piece of vellum there that will work and just sprinkle the powder all the way across this is actually not a black powder this one this is actually um, from Sizzix and it's, it's almost like a charcoal or a slate grey it's not quite black um, so pop that to the side so I don't spill it and I will put that back in a moment but I want to heat set this as quickly as possible so just holding that over the top but I'm not going to be holding it on any area too closely because that would potentially warp the vellum so as the heat gun warms up just keep keep it moving and you can go from underneath as well so you're not heating any area too much too quickly there we go okay so it's going to start turning now start to go glossy and as soon as it has move to another area just to give that time to cool down underneath and not do the whole crinkling up and warping thing there so I've got that gorgeous it's almost a metallic grey sentiment and because I've got it on the vellum when it goes over the top of the background there that's going to still stand out so now, now I need to trim this into a strip and start putting the card together so I've got my vellum I've cut it into a strip I'm just now distressing the edges I don't want this to be perfectly uh, perfectly smooth along the edges so I'm just going up with a pair of scissors or if you've got it a distressing tool and just chipping in to some of those edges some a little bit more than others so I want to be careful around the wording not to do too much because of course I don't want to go through the wording by accidentally tearing it too much and just work my way most of the way to the bottom okay now I need to trim this I didn't do it early, but I need to now trim this into um, around the edge to so trim that top and the bottom off as I said before I left that so that I could use my magnets on my um, on my stamping platform okay, so I've got that lovely background I'm going to bring that onto a card base now I didn't have a card base small enough for what I wanted so I tend to just simply trim down one that I've already got so I'll put that in the corner I'm going to place that along the spine and the base with the sort of border that I want from this panel then I'm just going to mark with a pokey tool just score a line and then bring my trimmer in again and cut the card base down so this trimmer will easily go through two layers of 320 GSM so I tend to do the whole length of the card first of all I'm just placing that scoreboard that score line that's in the center there as it should be oops I think I cut that a little bit off so let's just go again there we go that was a little off um, if you've got a trimmer that's not going to be able to easily cut away uh, where you need it so as in through through two layers you can open your card up then and you can do one side so my score lines there so cutting the front down and then you can close it you can use that as a guide to cut the back as well like so and then we should have a card base that fits perfectly We've got lots of strips of white card as well that you can use another time for sentiments and such so i'm going to just place this over the top there with the sentiment nearer the top i'm going to fold this over and then shuffle that along a bit so it makes sure it's really central and nice and flat as well and then fold this one over too 
there we go so what I'll do now is I'm going to use foam tape now you can put this on completely flat if you want to if it's for posted reasons whatever it may be you can do that but I'm going to put this on with foam tape so I'm going to put one piece of foam tape across the top there and that's going to hold that vellum in then I'm going to do the same across the bottom making sure that my card will still lay flat with the vellum on there I've not pulled it too tight or anything and it's not bowing and then a couple around the edge as well so it's a nice solid piece because the water will uh, the water that you applied earlier that will have loosened the fibers of the paper so it won't be quite as sturdy and strong as maybe it was when you first started so just popping these pieces off I think what I may do is add a little bit of twine to the base of this parchment panel as well and you can do this before you put it on but you've got a gap there you can still get under that so placing that down there and then I'll find a piece of twine and we'll add some ink splashes to finish so just feeding my twine under there and through and carefully very carefully going to wrap this around just tie it in a little knot at the front but not central so just to one side and you can use a little bit of tape or a little bit of glue just to hold that steady if need be the hardest thing is tying the knot without tearing the vellum so you want to be careful of that in fact I've got a fantastic fantastic collection coming up shortly in the next uh, month or two a couple of months maybe uh, that's actually got a die cut piece of rope twine like this that you can die cut from any colour and then add to your projects uh, making things a lot easier so excited for that there we go and lastly just to finish this off I'm just going to take uh, from I've got my mediums here I've got a white paint now this is uh, Dr PH Martin's bleed proof white I need a small just hunt out a small paintbrush and this is my go-to for finishing touches on a kind of a mixed media card it's just sometimes you need to spray a bit of water in there and it'll all mix in eventually just to loosen some of the paint up because I've not used this for a couple of weeks I'm just going to flick some lovely white splashes on both the vellum but also on the um, background as well so loosen it up with water and, and you can do this with uh, if you've got acrylic paint or anything like that and that just help finish that off there we go so there's a beautiful card that is perfect for Christmas kind of a mixed media feel to this one using the textures Jack Frost collection now I do want to do a very quick sneak peek just to finish this first video in the craft stash blog hop off and introduce you to my next Christmas collection which isn't out yet but it will be in a couple of weeks of this uh, video going live so if you're watching this another time it may already be on the craft stash website and this is the Nordic Christmas so we've got some fantastic elements in here so we've got background layering panels oh let's get you the right card there so if we look at the kind of the fair isle die cut layering panel in the background there's three elements to that one three dies in there I love that then we've got the embossing folder which I just showed you a sneak peek of there uh, we've also got actually while I've got this here we've got the Christmas tree three-dimensional Christmas tree that goes on the front of your cards I'm really excited about this one great for mixed media altered projects uh, but also for your Christmas decorations as well you see on the front of these two cards we've got tags and words and such they are all here in die form and I love that you can put that fair isle pattern into your tags as a border also um, then we've got stamp set now this stamp set is really good fun so it's stamps and dies uh, it's actually kind of lots of texture with the words but then also the stag shapes too and then you get the outline dies for the stag so you can cut those out leave them in if you want to uh, let, pop them back in there's lots of options for that uh, and there's that Christmas tree again so there's a sneak peek at a new collection there's the card that we've made today you can find everything listed below but you'll also find where you need to go tomorrow on the craft stash blog hop thank you so much for joining us everybody have a lovely christmas in july